Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Shalom, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan Selamat sore Tribuners dan sahabat Warta Kota Saat ini bersama dengan saya Leon, jurnalis Warta Kota Dan kali ini kita kedatangan tamu terhormat Yaitu Duta Besar Ukraine untuk Republik Indonesia Mr. Dr. Fasil Hamyanin Selamat sore Mr. Fazil. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> okay, that's it. How was your day? Uh, my day was as usual. Uh, I just woke up, checked my messages, answered all the questions, mm-hmm. uh, checked the news, recent news, because we have still uh, four hours uh, uh, of time difference. Mm-hmm. So I do it every morning and uh, like every late in the evening, I do the mm-hmm. same. So every day is like every day uh, since the war started. So uh, it's like regular day. So today we will talk about uh, the invasion Russians for Ukraines to Ukraines. According to you, actually, what make a uh, conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Uh, actually, there is no conflict between Ukraine and mm-hmm. Russia, and uh, it never has been because we, we we are not a country that would uh, would go for a conflict, mm-hmm. especially with a country like with a neighboring country would mm-hmm. never go for a conflict, and especially if this is a big country and all that. Uh, it's a war. It was an aggression, mm-hmm. an invasion of Russian Federation, mm-hmm. unilaterally and uh, uh, very treacherously. So, uh, yeah, th- th- there was a direct aggression, and uh, there are many reasons, uh, perhaps, in the in the head of uh, dictator Putin why he did so. But uh, um, I would say that the only reason for that, from my point of view, wa- was the will, the intention of uh, of uh, Putin. To restore the Russian Empire, so it was basically the very colonialist intention of his uh, of his statehood mm-hmm. of his uh, of his well, effectively the empire. Mm-hmm. However, it's it's not called that, but it's it is empire. It's a uh, last colonial state in the world, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, his intention uh, was to restore this empire. To like uh, I, I don't like this these words, but uh, as what they said to, to make Russia great again. Like, um, without Ukraine, Russia is uh, not feeling great enough, right? So, um, well, that, that was not my words. Mm-hmm. That's a word. These are words of uh, uh, many uh, clever men, wise men. Like, for example, like Zbigniew Brzezinski in his great chessboard, mm-hmm. he mentioned it. Without Ukraine, Russia would never be great, would never be an empire. So that was the main reason, I think, for, for this invasion. Okay. How, how about the, the update information about the about that conflict since the Russian invasion to Ukraine since like five months ago about the condition of the citizen maybe or the victims in your country? Well, the update is always uh, something very painful, and uh, I really don't uh, don't uh, feel uh, happy to talk about that mm-hmm. because uh, since the war, well, since the beginning of the war, um, well, till now. Uh, 20% of Ukrainian territories are temporarily occupied by Russian troops. Till now, we have uh, hundreds of children killed in uh, during this war. It's registered its official statistics mm-hmm. by the UN, not even by us. We have tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians killed by mm-hmm. Russian bombings. We have hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians injured and wounded. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you, when you when you see the pictures of the children without hands, without feet, and uh, th- this is a uh, this is a crime. This mm-hmm. is a grief for 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 the humankind. Uh, we have millions of people uh, fled from the occupied territories and from the territories Russian claimed to liberate. Uh, just millions of people left, and they were running not uh, uh, to the direction of uh, liberators. Uh, but they ran uh, towards the um, what Russians called Nazi government, and uh, you know, uh, they they run, they seek the shelter from Ukrainian government, of course, because they are citizens of of this country of Ukraine. Uh, we have uh, the uh, big cities and small towns and villages destroyed. Some of them just damaged, but some of them destroyed to the ground, like cities of Mariupol. Mariupol is uh, well. Maybe on an Asian scale, it uh, doesn't look big, but it's 500,000 peop- uh, people, 500,000 uh, population. Mm-hmm. It's uh, like rather big. In Ukraine, it, it's uh, it's big city, destroyed. And out of five 
hundred thousand uh, citizens. Now I think like some ten thousand left, mm. ten thousand left out of five hundred thousand, uh, and still suffering, and still uh, there is no water supply, there is no electricity, there is no gas, there is no shelter, there is mm. no place to live, mm. uh, there is no food, there is no water. So it's um, it's uh, it's a great suffering for the people left in Mariupol, mm. and uh, yeah, basically that's that's uh, very few facts. I can I can um, I would not go for. In, in big details because you can find it in the media mm. uh, as for the uh, war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by Russian army uh, like in uh, small cities of small towns of Bucha, Irpin, Borodyanka and many other cities mm -hmm. uh, which will include uh, like direct murders of people of uh, like civilians, mm -hmm. uh, tortures, uh, raping people, rape me, raping children and killing after this. This are these are like uh, thousands of uh, documents, thousands of proofs. Unfortunately, thousands of bodies, dead bodies, mm -hmm. over there. And now the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice already started the uh, criminal investigation on that. So um, some countries al already joined this process to investigate the war crimes mm -hmm. committed by Russian army. So, unfortunately, the situation is this. Mm. Latest update. Okay, sorry to hear that. So, yeah. the most victim is a uh, man or women or the uh, the maj absolute absolute majority of victims are civilians. It does civilians. Yes, uh, it would include mm. elders. Mm. It would include women, men, children. Fortunately, we um, you know, were like. Uh, like people were clever enough to evacuate children mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, well some part of, of, of women mm -hmm. of uh, female population of Ukraine from those territories uh, under attack mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately we could not evacuate all and they didn't want to go sometimes and uh, that's why but uh, the the point is not women or elders mm -hmm. it's civilians the major casualties mm -hmm. are among civilians not among militaries our army is very brave and uh, well equipped i would mm -hmm. say now by now and uh, uh, the mm -hmm. commanders are uh, like absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. uh, tactics and strategies strategists uh, all that but still we have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of soldiers a lot of ukrainian soldiers dying every day in the uh, in, in dying in, in action um, maybe 100 every day maybe 200 every day maybe less maybe more but it's still it's a uh, a lot of casualties, but still the main number is civilian. Okay. So, of course, uh, there are uh, some or maybe a lot of widows, widows in your country. Maybe, can you explain what is your country's regulations to their and their children? Well, well Ukraine now is uh, struggling on many directions because we uh, have the war, mm -hmm. right? We have to uh, ensure our army is well equipped and the mm -hmm. ammunition is there and the uh, um, soldiers are not starving, well fed and uh, the medical treatment is uh, on the high level and all the rest uh, like uh, communication, like um, logistics and all that. Yeah. On the other hand, we are facing humanitarian crisis in the whole territory of Ukraine because of the lack of food, because of the lack of uh, water, because of the need to gather crops as you see, the, we have new crops like uh, waiting to be to be gathered, and uh, farmers are just uh, are just in, in anxiety. They mm. they don't know what to do. They're anxious. How could we like lose all these mm. grains and all that? So there is uh, we are facing financial problems, of course, because the system is destroyed and all that many things. But the Ukrainian government is still uh, trying to ensure that all. Uh, vulnerable um, uh, parts of the population, all vulnerable uh, groups like elders, like disabled, like uh, people who are ill, who have like um, uh, illnesses, uh, and uh, the el elders I mentioned, children, women, they are protected. So uh, partially, it's government who delivers and ensures and uh, and like uh, like um, uh, delivers the 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 all the. Um, all necessary products, all uh, like uh, first, uh, uh, how to say, goods of first need or first necessity, and uh, some uh, 
arrangements are made by volunteers also. So volunteers are helping the, um, the vulnerable people too, when, when uh, you know, in inaccessible places or something. So uh, this only confirms one thing. The, uh, the, the terrorist state of Russia is not like uh, fighting with, uh, with soldiers, with warriors, with our army. They are terrorizing the civilians. This is something that uh, I hope the world understands. Mm. So may you may you give give me uh, the information about how much suffer the war victim because that invasion. How much? How much citizens suffer? Oh, this uh, I general well we don't have the uh, precise statistics. Can you can you can you imagine? We don't have precise statistics, mm -hmm. but we have uh, around, let's say, around 15 millions mm -hmm. of people of Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, left their homes. Okay. And uh, part of them uh, are refugees abroad. Part of them is uh, uh, like uh, described as displaced persons. Like they have to leave their homes and move to the Western Ukraine or some regions, try to find temporary shelter, temporary house. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's tragic because uh, some people, I mean, they leave everything they have. They just take documents and some money and uh, uh, like uh, dogs, cats, mm -hmm, children mm -hmm. and all that. So and, and run somewhere. So we are talking about the uh, 15 million people uh, in terms of uh, in terms of displaced. Mm -hmm. right? uh, if you talk about killed uh, in Mariupol, I repeat, uh, as far as I know, Uh, it was like 500,000 people, uh, roughly, roughly mm -hmm. 300,000 people fled from Mariupol outside. Roughly, maybe 100,000 people uh, were uh, forcefully, forcefully taken to Russia. Mm -hmm. Forcefully, they didn't want to, but they were just, you know, taken. And uh, around 100,000 people left. So out of this 100,000 people, roughly 10,000 people is alive means that there is around 100,000 people buried under the destroyed town uh, destroyed uh, houses and uh, schools and uh, hospitals it's only one mariupol only one city okay. talking about the public facilities how your country's regulations about the public facilities to build again maybe or is there any planning for the public facilities Oh, you mean the re rebuilding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, oh, there is a plan, and uh, mm -hmm. I think yesterday we received the information that the plan uh, was approved by the government mm -hmm. of Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think we'll we are going to deliver the uh, primer um, ideas and 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 and, and, and uh, like schemes and algorithms to the uh, foreign countries, to mm -hmm. the governments of foreign countries, including Indonesia. It's our primary plans. Of how to rebuild. Of course, we, we have so much of infrastructure destroyed, including, I mean, not just residential houses, but mm -hmm. schools, hospitals, uh, like ele electricity supply, uh, supply systems, water supplies, gas supplies, um, logistics, mm -hmm. uh, roads, uh, bridges, uh, everything. I mean, just, you know. So, of course, we have to rebuild all this, mm -hmm. and the damage is cost to Ukraine only in financial terms, uh, well, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. It's not just, you know, something, hundreds of billions. And uh, I think it's over a trillion, but I'm not sure about that. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And of course, we would like uh, all, the, all the partners, all the, all the countries of uh, goodwill to participate in this uh, big uh, projects of, uh, project of uh, rebuilding Ukraine, post-war rebuilding. Mm -hmm. How many cities that the building was broke by Russia? Many. It's, uh, I mean, I, I don't think... Is it, it all of the cities in your country or maybe is there still... Well, we're sti we are a big country, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I cannot say that every village, every mm -hmm. small town mm -hmm. was attacked. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, the um, vast majority of big cities mm -hmm. were attacked by Russian missiles, bombs, tanks and all that. Some of them just destroyed, as I mentioned, like Volnovakha, Mariupol, Severodonetsk is in, was in news, uh, Lysychansk was in news, 
Some cities like Kharkiv were severely damaged, so really severely damaged. Some cities like Kyiv were attacked many times and damaged, but well, provided the scale of Kyiv. Kyiv is a big city, so uh, Kyiv was not destroyed like uh, like that. By the way, if you if you if you look at what at what was happening um, during the Second World War, mm -hmm. Kyiv like Odessa, like many other cities, were not destroyed and even not attacked by, by Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. So now it's uh, like uh, where we see that they are worse than Nazi. So what they did to Ukraine. Okay. May you explain about the economic impact from this inflation? Uh, of course, there are economic impact to the world. Maybe you can explain what is the economic impact? Uh, uh, Again, I'm not an, uh, like a, no, this, 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 we don't, we don't go to, 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 to mention this. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> about the impact to the world. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I would mention only two or three uh, main points that mm -hmm. I feel uh, the crucial yeah. for today's, uh, today's world. Uh, actually, the world is facing a uh, global crisis in uh, food deliveries. Mm -hmm. So, um, the food security system is under threat because of the aggression. The uh, energy security system is under threat. And uh, the logistics mm -hmm. systems are under threat. If you talk, f talk further, it's like uh, it will include what, what is under threat is, uh, is the uh, global health system, mm -hmm. like anti-pandemic and all that, post-pandemic is under, thre yeah. under threat. It's um, uh, then what, what, what we say, uh, financial system could be. Uh, the, well, general, uh, generally, uh, Russian aggression has undermined uh, the whole global economy at large, which would include energy, food, uh, finance, etc., logistics, transport. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if we are not going to face a severe financial crisis, then we will definitely be facing a severe food crisis. Because uh, I'll explain this, like maybe in, in, in few details. It's not just we have the uh, around 20 million tons of grains still in silos, still waiting to be delivered to mm -hmm. the countries that need them. This is a big problem, but this problem can be resolved if the ports are uh, deblocated, deblocked, if Ukrainian ports are open and uh, navigation could mm -hmm. be restored. The big problem is, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the big problem is uh, with the new crops. If we imagine that uh, we'll have like 50 million tons of new crops mm -hmm. to be gathered and then we don't have places to store and then these crops just dies mm -hmm. just disappears mm -hmm. so we can lose like few 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 millions of tons at least simply because we don't have silos we don't have enough uh, warehouses we don't have a, we don't have vessels to store those grains this will be a tragedy for many countries because if we just lose it without any possibility to restore you know you cannot undo this mm -hmm. once it disappears it, it goes it's gone it's gone so uh, uh this will be a a, a a direct threat for uh, starvation mm -hmm. uh, for for some countries in in the world and uh, as you see that uh, the russian aggressors are not only blocking our ports they also destroy our crops by burning the fields you can see this video uh, every uh, uh, everywhere when the ukrainian farmers are trying to gather the harvest while the field is in is burning with fire set by russian aggressors amazing i mean our uh, what would you say they burn the the crops and w w which uh, ukrainians trying to save and deliver to the people mm. who are starving mm. so Last time, our president, Mr. Jokowi, uh, visited to your country, Ukraine, and also Russia for the peace mission. Mm -hmm. Is there any impact to your country, especially about the presidential G20 agenda in 
Bali Indonesia can you explain that the impact or maybe about the G20 agenda in Bali uh, these are different uh, different stories uh, if we talk about the uh, President Joko Widodo's visit to Ukraine and the future summit in Bali these are very different and they cannot be mixed up yeah so we uh, we were very happy uh, to have uh, Pak Jokowi visiting mm -hmm. Ukraine uh, we uh, and uh, also with uh, Ibu Negara uh, there was a really great visit and historical visit mm -hmm. I, would, I would repeat it again and again um, and this was a good example for the whole world for especially for the Asia and uh, like Africa and Latin America uh, for the country for the countries who still hesitate whether it's worth uh, efforts to to like uh, to to re-establish peace in Ukraine whether it's worth to do anything uh, to restore the peace and stability in Europe and and and, and uh, to prevent the global catastrophe so it's good example and uh, good results I think that uh, peace cannot be restored just with one visit or just one word uh, but it's a good start and uh, it's an excellent start i would say and uh, it's very important first step to the to the way of uh, uh, to the way of uh, peaceful uh, resolution of this war uh, and uh, i think that well uh, we are grateful and we are proud that what uh, we are proud of mm. uh, my government we are proud of uh, pak jokowi and uh, uh, indonesian government also, I would mention the role of uh, Ibu Retno, whose admirer I, I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, she did a lot to make this happen. And she did a lot to follow up after this visit. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as for the G20 summit in Bali, it's still like a uh, long time to go. And uh, uh, well, uh, what I can say is that unfortunately for, I mean, that was a, uh, that was a, uh bad timing for, for unfortunately for indonesia as a uh, presiding country in g20 mm -hmm. uh it just happened you know uh it could could have happened to anyone to any country presiding in g20 but it just happened this time that uh russia has destroyed all the agenda created and uh, built up by indonesian presidency so you make sure putin will not come to this agenda well, I mean, oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. First one is Russia has destroyed this agenda. Mm -hmm. What Indonesia has built up, mm -hmm. what it tried to promote, what mm -hmm. it tried to achieve, mm -hmm. was destroyed in no time by Russian aggression. So now, no, not a single point from this agenda can mm -hmm. be discussed between the members mm -hmm. uh, disregarding Ukrainian uh, situation situation mm -hmm. in Ukraine. You, you have to uh, understand, and, and and the ministers of foreign affairs made it crystal clear that if you want to talk about any of those problems any of those issues first you have to refer to ukraine first you have to refer to the aggression of russian federation and the consequences of this aggression to every point uh, in this in this agenda so uh, about the g20 summit in bali mm -hmm. uh, like um, in november yeah uh, i think that uh, this uh, you, you, well, war in Ukraine, or rather, I would say that Russian aggression will be the main uh, basis, the starting point, and the uh, the main um, point uh, for discussion. Mm -hmm. Because by stopping the war, by defeating Russian aggressor, by restoring peace, we will resolve a lot of questions. Not not at once, but it will give the uh, a, a nice uh, pre sorry just I have to I have to f uh, f this word what prerequisites right? preconditions Pre yeah precondition by ending this war by mm -hmm. by stopping Russian aggression by defeating Russian aggressor mm -hmm. will create all the preconditions for uh, achieving the uh, primary goals right without ending the war you will not be able to deal with uh, health secure health architecture or the food security or energy security or anything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah i would expect that a world community if by that time the war is still 
um, if, like burning mm -hmm. in Ukraine and uh, uh, if, if it is so, if it's not over, then uh, the main point of the agenda will be how to stop the war and how to start restoring the, 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 the points because, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I definitely think that uh, uh, Putin uh, will not attend. Uh, I mean, the, uh, as my minister mentioned, I may be, maybe not, uh, would not be able to quote him, but the idea is that uh, uh, there is no place for war criminals and uh, the terrorist states mm -hmm. uh, uh, among the, um, among the um, democratic uh, states respecting rule of law mm -hmm. and respecting the principles of humanity and peaceful coexistence. I don't think that war criminals deserve to be among the normal countries uh, like Indonesia, like Ukraine, like uh, like uh, whatever country, whatever else in the world, like like Korea or Japan. Yeah. So um, there is no place for them there. The only place they deserve is in uh, Hague Criminal Tribunal. Okay. So the last question is: What is your hope or what is your suggestion to this, according to this situation? Well, well, we all have uh, one and only hope mm -hmm. that the war ends mm -hmm. very soon, and, uh, and after the war, yeah, and our people uh, stop dying mm -hmm. uh, because of Russian uh, tanks and bombs and uh, missiles. Uh, that's my my hope. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I think that uh, if we like get more uh, more detailed. Mm -hmm. Uh, we would not. We are not ready. I mean, we are Ukrainians, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not me or or my government. Mm -hmm, Ukrainian mm -hmm. nation is not ready to end the war by any price. No, I think. Uh, no, I think. I, I know yeah, that that uh, we are not ready to uh, like um, give up the weapons or give up the territories mm -hmm. uh, in change of just ceasefire or something. No, uh, that our. Uh, firm belief is that Russian Federation as an aggressor, as a colonial state, will be defeated. Mm -hmm. Our territories, Ukrainian territories, will be liberated. Mm -hmm. We don't want uh, Russian territories. We don't want any any country's territories. But, but, but what belongs to us will be ours. We'll liberate the territories of mm -hmm. Ukraine, mm -hmm. all of them, and uh, we'll put the end to this war like this. Uh, no other hope, no other uh, beliefs. Yes, we will definitely win. Merdeka, atau mati. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fashil, for this good discussions. Thank you for your opinion and your uh, discussion with me. Maturnuun. Maturnuun. Baik Tribuners dan sahabat Warta Kota itu tadi diskusi hangat bersama dengan Duta Besar Ukraine untuk Republik Indonesia, Mr. Fashil Hamyanin. Yang terpenting adalah selalu kedepankan kedamaian dimanapun kita berada. Terima kasih telah mengikuti diskusi pada sore hari ini. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan, Salam Sehat buat kita semua.